A credit crisis is imminent and the banks are powerless to stop it. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter, and thanks for joining me today as major cracks are forming in the credit markets, suggesting we're on the cusp of another great financial crisis. And this has major implications for not only the economy, but the energy market. Now, before we begin today's story, I want to take you a little bit back and show you how the media gets this wrong and doesn't understand what's really happening. And then we'll get into the truth. Let's kick it off with a headline from Bloomberg that faltering market liquidity renews prodding for the Treasury buybacks as the Treasury hasn't done buybacks of off the runs for two decades. And some dealers see it as adding a backstop as the Fed withdraws. The escalation of liquidity troubles in the U.S. Treasuries caused by the strains tied to Russia's invasion of Ukraine is giving fresh impetus to calls for the government to provide purchase of older securities, a move that could improve trading conditions. And trading conditions in Treasuries recently deteriorated by some measures to the worst since the early months of the pandemic, keep in mind when bond prices went parabolic, sparked chaos of 2020. And that's before any impact from the Federal Reserve shrinking its own holdings of government securities as it plans to do later this year. The underlying issue is a lack of willingness by big banks to hold sufficient inventory of treasuries to buy and sell them in volume, especially securities that no longer the benchmark maturities. So, so far, we're seeing two things here. One, you're seeing issues in the secondary market, which isn't a big deal. But notice how they're telling you that the problem is banks don't want to hold bonds. I'm going to show you this in a moment. But remember, we've looked at some of the auctions this week. And what do we see? Stellar demand from foreign bidders. So clearly, whoever Whoever's writing this doesn't get it, but let's keep going so I can show you what's going on here because this particular strain when there's a surge in demand to trade has happened amid the revelations of the war. But here you can see from the primary dealer inventory, this numbers from the New York Fed showing the dealer inventory in three year notes is still negative and has been negative for several weeks. In 10 years has, is negative and been negative also for many weeks. Inventories on sevens are low and some of the other ones are relatively low. So the issue isn't that there's a problem in the treasury market that one of the first problems is there isn't a lot of inventory. And if there's not a lot of inventory and there's demand for something, well, you're going to see a lot of price fluctuations. That's just how it works. And that's being expressed here in what's called the move index, which is the VIX of the equity market. So think of this as the, the volatility of the bond market. And you can see it's really high. And that's what the author of that article is trying to point out that, hey, there's a problem here. And the problem is it's like going to an auction and wanting to buy something. And there's a lot of people there wanting to buy it and not a lot of choice. So you're going to see a lot of price movements. And so for those of you who hold bonds in your portfolio, you might know some days they go up and they go back down and the moves are big. And that's just because there isn't a lot of liquidity, not necessarily a bad thing. It just means there's not a lot of inventory out there because everybody's selling and shorting bonds right now because they don't understand what's about to come. And so let's continue on because I want you to keep seeing why the media gets this wrong. And Federal Reserve Bank of New York Executive Vice President Lori Logan was recently asked about buybacks during a question and answer session. Now, keep in mind, the idea here is that everyone thinks as if the Fed or the U.S. Treasury goes in and buys these Treasury securities on the secondary market, that that will fix the liquidity problem. But what you're going to see here shortly is the liquidity problem is going to fix itself in a way that nobody has seen. Let's keep going. Because if we went back to March and April 2020, when bond prices shot straight up, we were seeing broad-based selling of off-the-run Treasuries. Of course, as Jeff Snyder has shown, it was actually a problem of collateral. And where there was more activity than on the runs, Logan said, Treasuries could have some sort of program where we're swapping on the runs for off the runs. Now, what is on the run and off the run? On the runs referring to new issuance. Off the runs is a secondary market. A little bit confusing, but that's what they're mean here. The Treasury's primary objective is to issue debt at the lowest cost over time. It would be complex for the Treasury to do these buybacks over time. But what the real issue here now is the curve is inverting and is telling us some really bad things. And when you understand what a yield curve inversion is telling you to the credit markets and what it means with the bond market, well, you'll get a whole different picture than what the media is showing you. Now, like, check this out. So here is 
the recent treasury yield data as of Friday. And I want you to see here 30 year yields closed out at 2.36 and 20 year at 2.45. Now you'll notice the 30 year yields are less than 20 year and they have been telling you that the curve between 20s and 30s is inverted. Now, what does that actually mean when we're looking at this. So it's important to understand that when you see yields, you want to see them where one year is the, greater than the next. So for example, if we look at this chart, what we want to see is that two year yields are higher than one, three years are higher than two, five years and three, so forth. And we wanna see that across the whole curve. Now, why do we wanna see that? Is because it's telling you that growth in the economy is projected to be higher than inflation. And that's what you really want. You want to see growth exceeding inflation. And when you see that, the treasury curve reflects it as yields would be higher as we go down the, the maturity length. But when you start seeing inversions, and the 20 to 30 isn't a big deal. What I'm gonna show you with the seven and tens is a much bigger deal. When you see inversions, what it's telling you is that inflation expectations are now higher than growth expectations. And that's a huge problem for the economy. Now think of it from your personal budget. If your bills and your expenses are growing faster than your income, well, what does that mean for your household budget? Well, it means you're gonna to have to trim your expenditures on some things. That's not good. If you're a business, and your cost of being in business is growing faster than your revenue, well, what does that mean for your profits? They're going to go down. And what does it mean from a bank's perspective? Well, the bank lends at the front end of the curve or the short end of the curve, and they lend out to people at the long end. So as you see different maturities compressed together at a certain near a certain yield, the profit for a bank goes away and they quit lending. And that's a big deal because where does new money come from in our economy? When people borrow. So what you're seeing when you see this inversions is bad news. Now that you kind of understand this, let's go back and look what's going on here. As you may have noticed, I circled the seven to 10. And on Friday, the seven to 10 inverted. So now 10-year yields are at 2%, 70-year 2.01. You might say, well, that's not a big deal. It is a big deal. The right, the number isn't the issue here. The fact that it's inverted is now telling you that inflation is getting to be such a problem that it's really have hampering future growth expectations. And look at the five-year yields at 1.96 versus seven at 201. You can see this is getting close to inverting again, the seven, the, near the sevens and fives. And how about threes at 191? And so what you see here is a problem in the credit markets because that means the banks don't want to lend, companies will make less money, and consumers will have less money to spend. And this is an indicator of a future recession. Check this out. So here is the the yield curve of sevens and ten. So you take 10 year securities uh, yields, subtract seven year, and you get this beautiful graph here. And I want you to know is, is that when you get an inversion, which is below the black line, you see the curve coming down. When it rises, it rises into, you see this gray area, a recession. You see it here, rising into the gray area, a recession, rising, gray area, recession, rising, gray area, recession. And now back in 2018 and 2019, we were headed into a recession. And you can see as the curve went up, we had a pandemic save the global economy because what happened then is of course, governments borrowed and spent money like crazy and saved it. But look what's happening happened since here we are now inverted now i don't know how much lower this is going to go it can could go lower but at some point it's going to turn and rise and it's going to head into a recession now way most people will look at this chart is they'll see it the blue line going up and they'll say well that must mean yields are going up no it actually means the exact opposite it means shorter term yields are going to fall faster than the longer term but they're both going to go down in this case the sevens will fall faster than the tens so let's take a look at two different charts to show you if we go back to 1990, you see the yield curve, the seven and tens is uh, rising. And what happens? Seven year yields shown in red fall. And here you can see as the yield curve is inverted here again, seven year yields go down. Curve gets near or close to inversion, yields go down. And here you can see near inversion, yields go down. And what do you think is going to happen now is, of course, people's expectation are that yields are only going to go up. But the yield curve is telling you they're going to go down. It means financial conditions are tightening. Now, why would yields go down here? Well, it's simple. It comes back to where is new money created from? When banks lend. And so what do you need yields to do? You need them to go down to spur lending growth to create new money. And it even works with the 10 year. Here you can see the 10 year yields go down, yields go down, yields go down, yields go down, 
and yields go down and you get the idea of what is actually coming at a point where most market participants are either have sold their bonds or short their bonds. But if you're looking for a strategy that understands these dynamics and these risks and hedges before the recession, well, be sure to check out Portfolio Shield. I'll put a link in the corner in the description below. You'll be glad you did. But now let's get into what's going on in the high yield market because that has major implications for the energy sector, which everybody now is piling in and suddenly bullish on as Zero Hedge here headlines the credit is cracking. Uh, are the ominous words of B of A strategist Michael Hartnett chose to describe bond markets currently and is a very ugly picture indeed for both price and flows as high yield bond prices tend to lead equity prices lower. And here you can see from their chart, we're gonna take a look at a longer one here in a moment where high yield corporate bond prices head lower, the S&P will likely fall it down. Whereas a time when people are buying this dip like crazy, thinking the stock prices are gonna go up. But let's take a look at a longer term view here of this ETF symbol HYG. You can pull it up on your own charts, but notice how HYG is heading down here. This is back during the pandemic. You can see high yield bonds came crumbling down. Here you can see back in December 2018 where we almost had a massive correction in the market. You see high yield bonds led prices led everything lower, not shown in this chart. Here you can see back in 2015, 2016, where we had a major double dip in, in equity markets where people thought we we're headed into a recession. Here you see that double dip recession that came coming out of the great financial crisis. And here you can see the great financial crisis going on. So what are you seeing in this chart other than the price of an ETF going down is you're seeing rates, interest rates on high yield debt rise. And that matters because what the bond market is telling those high yield the issuers is trying to tell those who own these bonds is the confidence in the, in the issuers of these bonds is falling that they either may not be able to make their coupon payment in the future or even service the debt. And that has major implications for the broad economy suggesting that financial conditions are tightening and you get the idea that the banks here now can't come to the rescue. But what does this have to do with the energy market, you ask? Well, let's take this same chart. Let's pull forward the crude oil prices and put in the background HYG. I'm going to put HYG in purple here. And crude oil prices are being red and green. And notice here, going back to the great financial crisis, HYG was falling as crude oil prices were rising. And then crude oil prices just crashed. Then they rose together. Now, why, why is that happening? Because who are major issuers of high yield debt? Well, it's energy companies. You know, it costs a ton of money to punch a hole in the ground, and you're not guaranteed when you do it that there's going to be oil there. So it's very expensive. They issue high yield debt, and so you see a link between the two. And so let's keep going because notice now the next time this happens, back in 2015, they go down together. And then you see here coming back in 20, 20, late 2017 and 2018, high yield is rolling over, crude is rising, everyone's bullish on energy and energy comes crashing down. And you see, of course, the pandemic. And now you have a relationship where everyone thinks that energy prices are gonna keep going up. Crude oil prices are gonna go to 200 a barrel or whatever the number the experts say. The high yield bond market saying not so fast that energy prices are in indeed more likely to crash and again major implications for the credit markets and they're screaming that the economy is in bad shape at a time the fed's about to make one of the biggest mistakes in the history of modern day central banking on wednesday of next week when they have likely announced a fed rate hike and let me show you why because here if we go back to that yield curve in red i've marked where approximately they've started rate hiking cycles and that's when the yield curve was in a good place they've never started a rate hike cycle at least in any data that i could find looking at the seven and tens when the curve is inverted the Fed is going to drive the economy into a recession and the bond market's already telling us we're there. And now you see the, why the banks are powerless because they can't lend when yields are compressed together and the Fed's going into inflation fighting mode. And now you see what's going on in the credit markets has major implications for the broad economy. I'm your host, Steve Van Meter. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being fans. Bye now. The content of this video provides educational information only. It's not intended to provide investment or other advice. This is not to be construed as recognition or association by our security, financial or instrument, or participate in any particular training strategy. This video was prepared by Steve Van Meter. Personal capacity, business expresses video that do not affect the value of advice, Inc. or Steve Van Meter Financial.